Hey YouTube, it's your girl KYP561 coming in tonight to talk to you all about Season 9, Episode 3 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm going to try and get through this as uh, quick as possible. Um, the episode tonight was okay. Um, I'm just still not feeling like this is the beginning of a new season. Um, this just seemed like it's a bunch of filler um, filler scenes that we got going on. I mean, for what it was worth, I guess it was okay. You know, it still don't have me, you know, sitting on the edge of my seat or whatever. But, um, you know, when to hear, here you go. <laughs> so, we got... Um, Sheree, Portia, and Phaedra meeting up to do their usual eat and drink and throw shade at everybody and talk about how fat their asses is and, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, I, It was a small a small portion of camel toe talk. I don't know if that's some shit that went over my head, but I was like, first of all, first of all, let me start by saying this. Phaedra, bitch, I'm going to need you to... Get you some clothes that's age appropriate, okay? Because, I mean, I understand you trying to keep up with Portia. And Portia, bitch, you skating on thin ice sometimes. But Phaedra, bitch, uh-uh, okay? And bitch that's older than me, okay? Don't need to be wearing that type of shit. And then you got back fat rolls and all that carrying on. Now, nah, bitch, I got back fat rolls too. But, bitch, you will never see me parade, parading around town in a motherfucking uh, uh, cat suit. No. It's not going to do it. So anyway, child, um, they look like they have fun together, but it just seems like their interaction to me is like really um, shallow, you know, like um, and for Phaedra to be as smart and educated as she is and to be this lawyer and, you know, have all of these um, political ties or whatever or ties to people that have uh, political uh, positions and all this stuff. I just think that you need to do a little bit better, a little bit better as far as how you represent yourself on the show. Okay, so that's pretty much that, child. They weren't really talking about nothing. Um, uh, Phaedra was just telling them, you know, she had lunch with Kenya. You know, they had a little kiki about that, and you know, that's what it is. Then we go over here to some more unneeded shit. Uh, we got about two, three minutes of Kenya and Matt working out. Supposedly, I was like, motherfucker, for what? Like. <laughs> What the fuck is I, whatever? Um, I noticed that Matt has eyes like Randall from um, If Loving You Is Wrong, and um, those are the eyes of a fucking lunatic. Okay, so yeah, um, uh, Kenya, bitch, I hope you got you some uh, mace, bitch. I hope you got you a little. A little piece, you know. I can. I hope you keep your little hot sauce in your bag. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to tell you, but somebody that nigga ain't right. Okay, <laughs> somebody him is not right. Okay, so now all of a sudden we got Candy putting the bitch on once again because now we're giving attention to Riley's dad. Now all of a sudden we are having open conversations about Riley's father. Which the shit done been kept hush hush. You would think that Candy went and had motherfucking artificial insemination uh, with Riley. You know. Um, I did a little bit of research and I did find out his name and all this type of stuff like from seasons ago. But I just, I don't understand what's prompting. I mean, did they tell this motherfucker, listen, you better give us something. Because the people want to see more than you taught and this goddamn baby. So bitch, you better do something. You know, I already... Uh, Put your mama on here. That's old news. You know, brought the aunts on here. That's old news. You know what I'm saying? We need something. So, was this her way of keeping her slot on the show? I don't know. But I just find it really weird that now, all of a sudden, we got all this talk going on about Riley's dad. So, anyway, they having a damn meeting. Candy and her little squad. They having a meeting about some bullshit. They talking about they have, I don't know, something that we don't care nothing about. So, in the midst of them having a meeting... This chick just busts in the goddamn me. And so everybody looking around like, what the fuck? You know, and they looking like, how this bitch even get in here? You know, whatever, whatever. So I'm saying to myself, who the fuck is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, who is this? So as we find out, it's um, uh, Candy Baby Daddy, 
girlfriend okay not his wife but his fucking girlfriend and see i automatically got pissed okay uh, whatever let me just go ahead so anyway um it was it was real awkward in the room because everybody looking like what the fuck is you doing in here interrupting our shit you know and so i guess she kind of felt that or whatever so anyway they end up going off and having a conversation she claims that she's coming there on baby daddy's no, she ain't coming on his behalf because she said that she came here on her own. Which I got double pissed because, bitch, now you all up in my motherfucking business and this ain't even, and it's, none of this has a goddamn thing to do with you, okay? So, anyway, she's talking about, um, she, I guess, uh, I guess him and her supposed to be getting married, so they say, you know, everybody want to be the fiance, okay? Uh, anyway. Bottom line is, she feels like Riley and Block, that's baby daddy name, they should have some sort of um, relationship. So, and I wish Candy, I, you know, Candy in this fucking crying man, she just be, did she cry with this girl? I don't think she cried with this girl. I don't know if she did or not, but I know her ass cried about the shit and it was pissing me off too. What I was going to say is, Candy, you don't owe this bitch no explanation. You don't have to give her no motherfucking background st story on, on what the fuck went down with this man and his goddamn child. Fuck her. You know what I'm saying? And this hoe ain't got no kids from him either. Well, not that we know of. So I'm going to just say she ain't got no kids from him up to this point. Okay? So anyway, once again, bitch, what the fuck does one have to fucking do with you? Like, if anybody need to be coming trying to have a conversation with Candy, it need to be that nigga. It damn sure don't motherfucking need to be you. And I would have told her, uh, thanks, bitch, but no motherfucking thanks, okay? I, I, you know, I guess I can appreciate your effort, but, mm-mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. So, anyway, child, um, let me see. Uh, oh, so, after she left, you know, everybody want to know what's the tea, blah, blah, blah. And did I not hear one of the motherfuckers say that Riley is almost 14? Listen. I need somebody to tell me how old in the fuck Riley is, okay? Because Riley done been on this shit since, what, 2008, 2006? I don't fucking know how. I don't know when the fuck she came on here. But I know right now, Riley should at least be motherfucking 16, if not 17 years old. It seemed like every year, Riley is only eight months older than the fuck she was on the previous goddamn season. We got Noelle looking like a grown-ass woman. We got fucking Sheree, youngest child, is in the 12th goddamn grade. So come on, man. I'm going to need somebody to stop fucking playing with me. How the fuck old is Riley? Okay, and why the fuck do they keep wanting us to believe that Riley is in fucking... If she 14, if she finna be 14, that mean Riley in the 7th grade? Bitch, get out of here. Uh-uh. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Okay, I'm not going for it. So anyway, as they're talking about that, Todd kind of puts his two cents in. And he says that he thinks that Riley and her dad should have a relationship. Okay. And so do all of us think that. But bitch, I'm not going to be... Their situation is different than Todd's situation. Todd did not know that he had a daughter, so he said. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know about this. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and go with that, okay? Todd didn't know he had a daughter. So, of course, any any real man that knows that he has a child out there, you got damn right. I need to go and see about my child. I need to get in my child life. I need to get to know my child. Matter of fact, you know, let my child come live with me so we can get the bus, so we can bond, you know, especially because they live in different states, whatever the case may be. You know, so Todd, I, I feel his situation, but bitch, from my understanding, bitch, Block is right there in Atlanta where the fuck Riley is at. So, bitch, it ain't no goddamn excuse as to why he's been absent throughout this child's life like this. So, you know, I mean, Todd, I understand what you're saying, but it's just a different scenario. So then we go over here to Matt and Kenya, which I believe they, they could have just left them out of this whole episode because I really wasn't interested. Because I, I think it's some bullshit going on. Okay. So anyway, you got Matt and Kenya, child. They taking a road trip. He having a, uh, they, they going to his family reunion. And she all geeked up and shit about that. Who the fuck cares? Then we got another who the fuck cares scene. Sheree going over here to Bob's house. Why the fuck was Bob sweating like that? 
And was he trying to be sexy? Because it was the total, the fucking total opposite. It was, it was borderline disgusting. Okay, bitch. First of all, you got this eye going over here. Then you motherfucking sweating like a motherfucking pig, and then you big and just burly. And it's like when he uh, rubbed up against Sheree, I was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I jumped, bitch. Oh, and then you know he. I don't even know what he was talking about. I was just so disgusted. I'm like, Sheree, bitch, why is you here? Like, why is you here? You know, I don't understand. You know, and then, you know, he's talking about, you know, you over there in that big ass house, a big house or whatever. You know, can I move in? And she was like, oh, no, you got to take baby steps. Bitch, let me tell you something. It wouldn't be none amount of steps in this motherfucking world that your ass could have ever, could ever take if the divorce went down. Okay, that's fine, bitch. We ain't got to be together. But a motherfucker tell me to my face. You ain't doing shit for your motherfucking kids. And now that these motherfuckers is grown because the, 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 the son, that nigga's already in college. And the damn daughter, she finna be in college because she in the 12th grade. So, bitch, what the fuck do me and you have to talk about anything? These goddamn kids grown. So, you got a nerd now all of a sudden y'all can have a damn, a decent relationship. Talking about co-parenting. Bitch, what you mean co-parenting? These goddamn kids grown. You know, I'm not Sheree, bitch. Uh-uh. I I'm sorry, but you, 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 no. That nigga couldn't, that nigga couldn't even ask me the time of day. He couldn't even say, what time is it? You know what I'm saying? That nigga couldn't ask me shit about nothing, okay? Bitch just said, fuck, fuck my kids. No, bitch, fuck you forever, okay? So anyway, child, that's that. Another who gives a fuck scene because it wasn't about nothing. You got Cynthia meeting up with her mama and sister or whatever. And the sister basically says that Peter had called her a couple of times and, you know, was saying how um, he missed his wife. Now, bitch, now all of a sudden, what the fuck you calling male for? You couldn't stand male ass for three whole goddamn seasons. Now, all of a sudden, you calling him male and, and male, bitch, you couldn't stand that nigga either. The feeling was goddamn mutual. And now, all of a sudden, you want to take his fucking feelings into consideration, bitch. You and the mama have been plotting. You, you and the mama had to call the downfall of this shit from goddamn day one. But now, all of a sudden, you sitting there, oh, you know, and he said that he misses his wife, you know, and I didn't tell you because I wanted to respect him coffee. Bitch, what? Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. What you talking about, child? So anyway, then you got um Portia and Phaedra meeting up at some park somewhere. Um, Phaedra, ma'am, bitch, you is fat. Okay. There's no that's that's not no thick. That's not no um that's not no uh uh Georgia Peach nut no, bitch. You're 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 plump, okay. You're 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 a chubby cake, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, you you can say whatever the fuck it is that you want to say. I mean, you know, you're not Portia. I don't know. I don't know if Portia is, you know, waist training, drinking t flat tummy tea. I don't know if she's had surgery. I don't know what, exactly what she's done. But bitch, you haven't done that, okay? Cause no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, child, they get out here to this park. Here come um, uh, Portia. Now she's talking about she want to have a baby, but she don't want to have a relationship. Like she just want to be. She wants to be a single parent, basically. Portia's an old silly bitch. She's an old silly bitch, and that's gonna carry over until until another scene on down the line. So Kenya and Matt, they finally make it. They finally make it to. Uh, I think they were going to Cincinnati. I think. And so they having like a little brunch or whatever, kind of like a meet and greet because she never met his family or whatever. And off rip, it don't really seem like they feeling her off rip. But the main bitch that was getting on my motherfucking nerves was that goddamn sister, okay? I'm going to get her ass a little bit in just a minute. First of all, we find out that Matt is a motherfucking mama's boy, okay? And uh, the sister acting like he... Got some shit going on, and Kenya just the old nobody bitch that's perhaps trying to leech on to him, and by her being older, sway him and have his head and shit all fucked up, and she take all this shit. First of all, let me tell you, y'all bitch, I'm not here for Kenya, but I'm a fair bitch, okay? I, I call the shit like I see it. I don't. I'm not gonna make excuses for nobody, okay? Kenya ain't just no old nobody ass bitch. This motherfucker has made a life for herself. So if Matt ass is there or if Matt ass is not there, kick ass will still be able to sustain, okay? It, it ain't shit that Matt can give her besides some pipe that, you know, uh, is going to determine, you know, you know, 
whether or not she makes it in life or not. So, bitch, y'all can stop acting like that, okay? Like I said, bitch, I don't really like Kenya, but I'm a fair bitch, okay? So that goddamn sister was doing too motherfucking much, okay? So, anyway, the mama talking about what's your intentions for my son. Bitch, my intentions for your son is for him to hopefully not be kicking my ass in the next couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? My intentions is to keep this nigga as calm as possible so his ass don't jump out of a motherfucking bag on my ass. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're my goddamn intentions. Other than that, bitch, I'm, I'm, I'm here with the same intentions that your husband had when he married your ass. The same intentions, uh, sister, if you got a motherfucking man while your ass all over here in my damn relationship, my goddamn intentions is the fucking same as yours. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, she throwing shade to my older. You consider yourself a cougar and all that. Bitch, fuck you. You know, like, I was like, who is this bitch? Like, what the fuck is going on here? So, anyway, that was that. Can you seem to have, the, the daddy was cool. The daddies always be cool. You know what I'm saying? It be, the, it be the mamas and the motherfucking sisters that be on that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I didn't have that problem. It's like, when I met my, my husband's um, family, because we, we're from different states also, um, but when I met them, it's like, you know, I just fell right on in. You know, I, you know, I don't know. I guess that's just the type of bitch that I am. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. Motherfuckers like me. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so uh, it seemed it seemed like she kind of like was uh, winning the mama over a little bit. But that motherfucking sister, that one just wouldn't let it go. And I was like, God damn, like, is y'all too fucking? Like, bitch, is you really the sister? Like, what's going on here? He must have used to fuck with one of your homegirls. And that's who you really want him to be with. And you don't understand why he won't be with this old bitch over here. It's something. Cause bitch, you was doing too much. Cause me personally, I don't give a fuck. My brother brought his girlfriend. Now my brother did have one girlfriend, and I wasn't really feeling her. But that's because, like I told y'all before, a real bitch see through a fake bitch. Okay, and the fake bitch is recognized when the real bitch don't peep their ass out, and they try and stay as far away from him as possible. And that was the situation with that. However. I wasn't doing all that shit that this motherfucker here was doing. You know what I'm saying? I just was like, man, please, that bitch don't run this nigga through the through the uh, through the through, through the ringer. And uh, you know, that's just a lesson you gotta learn as a man. But anyway, child, so that was that. Then we go back over here to Candy and Riley. Now, bitch, once again, now after I don't see Riley, I'm saying to myself, now y'all motherfuckers really want me to believe that Riley 13 years old. Bitch, Riley must got the motherfucking uh, Benjamin Button or a goddamn van, uh, uh, a vampire or something. Like, what, what that shit called? What bitch don't, uh, bitch don't age or whatever? Cause if you want me to believe this motherfucker's thirteen, but she look like she's fucking seventeen, okay? But then as Riley starts to talk, I'm like, okay, now this motherfucker talks like she thirteen. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all gonna need to put Riley in a better school. Candy, bitch, I know you got the money, okay? I mean, I don't know if she goes to public school or, like, one of those performing arts schools. So I'm like, you know, you know how to be having all them 50 million, um, thousand goddamn schools, you know. But um, you need to put her in some speaking classes, some speech classes, because that slow, dragging-ass talking that she was doing, oh, my God, it was killing me dead. I couldn't. I was like, girl, if you don't open your goddamn mouth and talk, she just seemed like she's just you know, dorky, like, you know, I mean, I, I'm not talking about the child, okay, but I'm just saying, okay, um, if y'all want her to be productive in this world, and not just writing off the fact that Candy Burst is her mama, okay, and Candy just gonna give her a job in the candy factory, or some shit like that, if y'all, um, y'all want her to establish a life of her own and live independently, y'all gonna first have to teach this motherfucker how to articulate, Okay, cause that shit there, oh God, no. Mm -mm. So anyway, um, then we have Portia, and we finally see this ex boyfriend that she's talking about, and he is a cutie. He was really cute, like he was cute, uh, in a, in a boyish type of way, you know. But he was cute, and I actually think that they look cute together. Now I'm still trying to figure out this timeline here, cause uh, she almost she almost gave some shit away when she went talking about how long ago it was that they dated, and them pictures that they showed of them two, that looked like new Portia. That didn't look like old Portia before Cordell. I mean, and, and what? How many years it been since since that Cordell shit? What it been about three, three years, two years? So I'm gonna need y'all. Okay, uh, but anyway. <laughs> Um, he lives in D.C., we come to find out, and he came to, uh, Atlanta to visit her, I guess, he came to visit her, and, um, you know, he, she went to tell him about 
she wants to have a baby, but she don't necessarily want to have a husband or whatever. And then he, she fucks around and tell him that she thinks that he will be a good person to give her this, give her a baby. And he was like, <laughs> you know, who in the fuck wants to be just a baby mama? Like, who wants to do that? You know, and then you you want to have a baby, but you you're saying that you don't really want him to be involved to see it's easy to say that shit but when your ass and like she said you know my sister just had a baby yeah but bitch your sister got a motherfucking fiance bitch you know you talking about you want to have a baby and you know uh he don't really have to do anything y'all just gonna co-parent no Portia that's bullshit and you have the mind of a goddamn snail if you think that that shit is really gonna work out like that the whole the whole 18 years or Whenever the fuck this child gets up out of your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, who is raising these motherfuckers? Like, I just don't get it. But anyway, child, he, uh, he flat out told her motherfucking ass, hell no, I ain't gonna be able to do that. Okay, you know, I want a little bit more for you. You know, I, I think that you deserve a little bit more. And I thought that that was sweet to say. But see, Portia wonder why she can't keep a man. Because see, you do shit like that and run their asses away. Like the last nigga do. Bitch, you and Duke was dating all the two weeks, and all of a sudden you talking about you 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 going house shopping and all this type of shit, and then you wonder why that nigga ain't call your ass back no more. You know, aside from other things. <laughs> but then you got with uh little Rico Suave from down here in Miami or whatever. You went to talk about that relationship with his ass. Now all of a sudden it's like uh I just said that nigga name and forgot it just that damn quick. <laughs> whatever you know what i'm saying now you know it's the oliver that was that motherfucking name now it's like oliver never fucking existed so portia bitch while you right here getting anger management you need to also get some type of uh 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 relationship counseling or self-evaluation or something like that because you be running these niggas off girl you be doing too much child you be doing too much, but yeah, I like I like Todd, and I think that I would like them together. Like, you know what I'm saying? So far, from what I've seen for like the first, you know, just two minutes of it, I think that they're cute together or whatever. So now we got Kenya back over here with fucking Max, fuck ass sister. Okay, so now they at the little, I guess that's kind of like the banquet part of the family reunion or whatever. And uh, she, she hollered about she want to talk to Kenya or whatever. So Kenya goes over there. And now I think that Kenya did really well because I believe had it been any other situation, Kenya would have went the fuck off. Okay. But I think that she did well. I think that she genuinely wants to be a part of a family, you know, because that's some shit that she does not have especially when it comes to you know mother and and father and that type of shit or whatever so she tolerated a little bitch but me personally i'd have been like listen um you know i understand you his sister and all but so in order for me not to um say some shit okay because you're doing a bit much right now i think that we just need to keep our conversation to a minimum okay how about that so anyway, the sister goes over there talking about, you know, something's just not sitting well with me. Bitch, I don't give a fuck what's not sitting well with you, bitch. I don't understand. Why the fuck do you care? You're not talking about, oh, you know, I just want to know, is it going to last? Bitch, what kind of dumbass motherfucking question is that? Bitch, your goddamn mama and daddy probably done been together well by 30, 40 goddamn years. But guess, guess what? That shit can still motherfucking end. Ain't no shit promised for fucking ever. So what the fuck type of question is that? Is it going to last? Bitch, how many niggas you done went through? Is it is, is in your shit done last it? Like, what the fuck is you want me asking me these stupid ass questions for? You know, and that's my baby brother, and I don't want to see him get hurt. Well, bitch, he's going to get hurt. If he's not going to get hurt by me, he's going to get hurt by the next bitch. You know what I'm saying? And if he put his motherfucking hands on me, he going to really motherfucking get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Why you writing talking about hurt feelings? No, bitch, it's going to be a hurt ass, okay? Fucking around. But anyway, child, so, you know, um, Kenya, she... You know, she did her little song and dance. You know, them them pageant motherfuckers, they know how to they know how to say what a motherfucker wanna hear. You know, so I guess they supposed to be cool or whatever. And um her king and the mom, you know, they um they had a good conversation or whatever. So it seems like all is well with Kenya, Matt and the family. So child now we finally meet Block.
So we got the girlfriend in the studio, and I think that girl was the chick that went to um Kenya's housewoman party with Candy. And then of course we got RL with his little cute self. He's such a cutie too. Um, so he come walking his ass up in there. Now my whole thing is, why are we giving this nigga camera time? Like, why are we giving this nigga camera time? So once again, Candy, you put money, you put money in this nigga pocket some type of way. Cause now he's getting exposure. Like, why, bitch? Why you ain't been made an appearance on this shit? You know, now why all of a sudden, bitch? Now, not only are you just you you openly talking about this nigga. Now we got to see this motherfucker too. Okay. All right. So anyway, child, him his him and his girlfriend, cause she all the way pissed me off on this shit here. You know, I can't stand when the girlfriend comes in and the 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 nigga telling him telling her about, you know, all his kids and baby mamas and how everybody has wronged him and he just ain't did shit. Okay. Listen, you know what type of motherfucker you got. I say this shit all the time. You know what type of motherfucker you got when you get them and you know when a nigga telling you some bullshit. Okay. So anyway, they having a damn conversation, you know, old girl talking about how she went and sat down and tried to talk to Candy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they have completely shut him out. See, this is why I say people need to support their man all the same time while minding their motherfucking business. Because, bitch, you are not there. You don't know what the fuck went down between these people, okay? So, therefore, you should not be speaking on a motherfucking thing that has to do with this man and that damn child and that child's mama. Because the only motherfucking thing that you know is what this nigga done told you. And we can see he's an old ignorant ass motherfucker because he said some old dumb shit about, you know, uh, basically the motherfucker said he ain't finna be, in my words, he said he ain't finna be chasing now one of them motherfuckers round or down for him to have a, 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 a relationship. Well, bitch, what type of nigga is you? I'm sure you chasing these hoes around. So why the fuck can't you put some of that some of that energy into chasing your motherfucking child? And bitch, yes and the fuck you do need to chase your goddamn child. Because see now, bitch, I feel some type of way about that. Because I've already, I've told you all a couple of times about the relationship that I had with my dad, which is non-existent, okay? And at some point, I did feel like I wanted to find him. But then I was like, hold on, bitch. You the motherfucking child, and then you the only child at that. So what nigga is walking around this earth knowing that he got one child, one daughter at that, and then he don't make an effort. This nigga ain't moving heaven and earth trying to find this motherfucker and make sure that she all right. You know what I'm saying? That's some old fuckboy type shit. You know, and I could tell by the way this nigga was talking that he on that fuckboy shit. I could tell, you know. But anyway, then you got, you know, she's sitting over there with that, you know, amen and the egg and that shit on. But that's all right, bitch. You better hope, if you ain't got a motherfucking baby from his age, you better hope you don't have one. Because, bitch, you're going to be over there crying on Candy's shoulder. You know, y'all going to be over there, bitch, comparing notes. And I tell you, fuck you, bitch, and get the fuck up out of here and, sis, and, and, and stop shutting that man out. <laughs> but, yeah, child, um, I, I pretty much think that was it. I think. <laughs> Yeah, um, like I said, it was overall all right, child. Y'all got me on this camera with my motherfucking glasses on, bitch. Now, y'all know I love y'all. Y'all motherfuckers don't see me in all types of form. Y'all done see me without my makeup on. Y'all done see me bald-headed. Now, y'all see me with my motherfucking glasses on. Bitch, now, y'all know I love y'all, okay? <laughs> child, please, but yeah, honey, hopefully them contacts will be in. Um, hopefully I had them motherfuckers by Wednesday because I can't be going out with these damn glasses on, child. But I can't see, honey. I need some type of, I need an extra set of eyes, honey, because I can't see worth a damn, child, without it. So anyway, y'all, thanks for clicking on the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, all that good shit. Y'all know I got Married to Medicine coming. I don't know when it's coming. Hopefully I get it up tonight. I got to go in here, um, uh, watch it now. I got it on the recorder. So until we meet again, y'all, peace out.